guys. Good morning. Happy Friday. Black Friday for some people that are out shopping. I hope y'all are having a good day. I am home working. Okay. I am just on break right now. Um, I work in healthcare and I work from home. Um, for those of you that don't know that, I don't think I talk about my job that much on my channel, but I work from home and today I have to work, which is fine with me because I'm perfectly fine with double time and a half, okay? Um, with holiday pay, <laughs> yes, sign me up. Um, but I work in healthcare, I work for a genetic testing company. Um, so it's not like there's people really calling in today, okay? Like doctor's offices are closed, people are out shopping. So literally, like, guys, this has been such a slow day and a slow morning. Um, but I love my job. I love what I do. I've been in healthcare forever. But I am not shopping today, guys. And even if I wasn't working, I would not be shopping today because I don't do Black Friday, okay? <laughs> I just, yeah, no. But anyway, guys, I have some words for you guys. And I'm sorry for the noise, text messages. Um, but I have some words for you guys. The Lord has really been these last few days, and I dream a lot, guys. For those of you that are new to my channel, God speaks to me a lot through dreams, mainly, um, but he also speaks to me through numbers a whole lot, and I do have some visions, and he's starting to use some different ways to speak to me, too, um, which is why I always say... I always tell people, do not box God in when it comes to how he speaks to you, because even though you're used to him speaking to you through dreams, does not mean that that will always be the way that he speaks to you. As your gift increases, he will switch that up on you and speak to you in different ways, okay? So that I have started to notice that now he will call out names to me. Um, I'll hear his voice and he'll call out names or he'll call out names in dreams. And um, I've always had dreams where he'll put certain people in my dream for the meaning of their name so that when I wake up and he's giving me the interpretation, the meaning behind that person's name will match the dream, okay? But recently he's been giving me names in dreams as in like just names of people that the message is for. Um, so that's a bit different for me, but I've been enjoying it. However he's speaking to me, I accept it all because I just like hearing from him, okay? When you have an intimate relationship with God and you're letting him lead and I don't take my gifts for granted, I'm very humble um, and I'm also a willing vessel. So if he tells me to get on and say something, even if I don't like the message or agree with it or to tell somebody something, how, whatever he tells me to do, I'm obedient. So I will do it. Um, and I don't take the way that he speaks to me for granted because there are so many people that wish they could dream every night or hear his voice every day because it literally, it makes life easier. Like I'm able to, you know, I mean, anybody can hear from God, um, but how he speaks to us is different and you have to be willing and open to hear what he has to say, even if, if it's something that you don't want to hear. Um, but I'm so excited for these messages today, guys. Bear with me. I don't know how short or how long it's going to be. I'm going to just let him lead. Um, but yesterday, guys, in the wee hours of the morning, Thanksgiving morning, 1125, I literally had like five dreams back to back to back. Some of them went with each other. Other of the other dreams were separate, but I had so many dreams, guys, and I thank God because he was allowing me to wake up on this after each dream and record them so I can remember them, but I really did not sleep um, on Thanksgiving, like when I went to sleep on the 24th, which is pretty late, and the wee hours of the 25th on Thanksgiving morning, like early morning, I really didn't sleep like that because I kept having dream after dream after dream after dream and I had to get up and record it and it was so like I was just thanking God because I was so amazed and not to say that I don't have dreams all the time. I do, but it's different when you're having dream after dream after dream and you're able to remember the dreams, okay? Those of you that God speaks to through dreams, you don't always remember your dreams and sometimes... Almost all the time I have to wake up and be like, God, you know, help me remember this dream if it was from you, like give it back to me because I don't always remember. But as God increases your gifts and as you become more obedient, like he will start to download more into you. 
So guys, it was just so crazy. And I was so excited as I'm getting these dreams because some of them were personal for my, my own life, but even personal dreams like he will drop in my spirit when it's for other people too. So I'm going to release these dreams, guys. Probably not all of them. No, I'm not going to release every dream that I had because I'm going to let him lead on those. But the one, the couple or three that he's had me studying and like giving me the interpretation and scripture to back it up, I'm going to release it because this is for somebody, somebody's. It's for more than one person. Okay. And he actually called out a name in this dream or, and you guys will understand it. So bear with me because I don't know how long or how short this is going to be, but I won't be before you guys too long um, because I'm just on a break, um, you know, in between kind of assignments. So I'm not working right now. I'm on a break. Um, so it won't be before you guys too long because I still kind of have a busy day today. <sighs> but let's get into it. Okay, guys. Um, and let's start with a scripture. I'm going to give you, <laughs> this is how I know this, these sets of dreams weren't just for me. Um, I dreamed all of these dreams that I'm going to talk to you guys about. Again, I had these dreams the wee hours of Thanksgiving morning. So 1125. Okay. And the Lord brought me to Proverbs 1125 this morning. And it says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Okay, I'm going to read that again. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. This is this gave me the go ahead too to say like this dream is for other people. It's not just for you. Share it with my people. Like everything it's always bigger than us. Our gifts and our callings are always bigger than us. So I'm excited cuz I know this is going to help somebody. Okay? Um so flow with me and this these um sets of dreams are mainly for people that are standing for marriage restoration or relationship restoration of some sort, but mainly marriage restoration. Um, but restoration can be in different forms in different areas of your life. So if it is for you, you will feel it in your spirit. If you're not sure if it's for you, take it back to God. But this is centered around marriage restoration, okay? So the first dream on 1125 that I had, um, I dreamed of seeing, and I'm looking down, guys, because I I wrote out everything, even though it's recorded on my phone. I had to write it out as God was giving me the interpretation. Um, so the first dream, I dreamed that I was I was a watchman in majority of these dreams, but in this dream, I was a watchman, and it means I wasn't in the dream. I'm just watching what's going on. So it's like I'm not even there, but I'm there. I can see what's going on. And I was watching this, this um, lady, her daughter, and um, the lady's husband, so the daughter's father. They were outside, and it, it looked like just acres of land. Like they lived, their house was on acres and acres of land. And they were just bonding and having family time with one another. Like they were happy. They were, they were a happy family. They were a beautiful family. Um, and again, it was a wife, a husband, and their daughter. And they were just having family time, guys. Um, that was the first dream. Then it switched to me as a watchman again. And I'm not there. I'm just watching this happen. And this lady, this Caucasian lady, was in um, this office, right? It was like a professional setting, like an office. And she was sitting at this desk. And there was a white Caucasian male behind the desk, okay? And white, the Lord will, will often use um, Caucasian people in my dream because white symbolizes um, purity or righteousness. Purity and righteousness, actually. Um, so there was a man, he was dressed in like, I don't know if he had on a suit and tie or like a dress shirt, but he was dressed professionally. He was sitting behind his desk in this office and the lady was sitting on the other side. And in the dream, he was prophesying to her um, almost. He was telling her, he had showed her a picture of how her husband used to look, right? And he showed her a picture of this Caucasian man, tattoos all over his face. He had a mouthful of gold teeth, guys, a grill. That's what younger people refer to it as, a grill. He had a mouthful of gold teeth, tattoos all over his face. And he's like, this is how your husband used to look. And I remember in the dream, I'm like, this lady 
she was very sophisticated. I'm like, I wouldn't even think she would date somebody that looked like that, okay? But he's showing her. He's like, this is how your husband used to look. He's like, your husband doesn't look that way anymore. And he was pretty much telling her her husband is a changed man. Like, he's a transformed man, right? And you can see, like, the happiness all over her face, right, as he's telling her this. And then he, um, he told her, he said... For all that your husband took you through, for everything you went through, he was like, you're about to have an abundance, like an overflow. And he was speaking of, he was speaking in so many different areas about how her life is going to change. And I can see the excitement, like in her, her, her posture and like her, her movements. And she was smiling and he was just telling her like, your life is about to change for everything that you had to go through in this marriage with this man who's no longer the same man. Yes, he's he's being transformed or he's been transformed. But for everything that he put you through, for what you had to go through in this marriage, he was like, you're about to experience an abundance of overflow. And the last thing I remember him saying to her was that she was going to receive a huge financial blessing, like more than she could even imagine. And I remember in the dream, her like covering her, her mouth with her hands and she was just in awe and she started standing up just like praising and just like literally just like so much joy was in her. And this is me watching this guys as a watchman. And from that dream, it switched to um, me seeing the daughter, right? And again, I'm a watchman, so I'm not there, but it switched from that that setting in the office to me looking at this lady's daughter and her daughter was at home throwing out all the old stuff that they no longer needed in the home. She was organizing, she was cleaning out, but I saw her daughter cleaning out all of the old stuff that they no longer needed, right? And then from there, it switched to... <laughs> me standing in the middle of a ballroom and I was waiting dressed um for this bride to come so I was at so I was at this lady's wedding right and I heard the Holy Spirit say in the dream that you're waiting for Rachel Weber Rachel Weber to come down she's the bride like I heard the Holy Spirit say this in my dream guys that I was at a wedding for Rachel Weber and I was waiting for her to come down, okay? She was the bride, it was her wedding. So it was not just me in this ballroom, it was other people, but we were all waiting for Rachel Weber to come down. It was her wedding, okay? We were apparently invited to her wedding, so we were waiting for her. And I woke up. I don't know a Rachel Weber, guys. And again, I say, the Lord will often put people in my dream that I know in waking life or he'll, yeah, usually he'll put people in my, my dream that I know in waking life for the meaning of their names, right? But as you guys have watched my previous videos, God has been giving me names of people recently that I don't know. Um, so it's been a bit different. It hasn't been just for me to look up the meaning of their name, but he's been calling out people's names, like even with Brittany, with Lisa, like he's been calling out people's names that I don't know. But I know that when I make the videos that he wants me to say this person's name because the video is for people with that name or a person with that name, a particular person. So Lisa Weber was who the Holy Spirit told me in the dream that I was waiting for, like it was her wedding. And I didn't see that. I know it was the Holy Spirit because there was no person around me talking to me. I just remember hearing, <laughs> hearing the Lord speak and tell me, you're waiting for Rachel Weber. You're waiting for her to come down like she's the bride. So if there is a Rachel Weber, okay, and this will like literally shock me so much, so much. But if there's a Rachel Weber or a Rachel that is subscribed to this channel and you are waiting for marriage restoration, honey, say no more, okay? Because this dream pretty much tells you everything that's about to happen and play out in your waking life, okay? And I, I looked up the name Rachel in which the Lord has given me the name Rachel before. Like I've, I've heard this name from the Lord prior, not in this capacity to where I'm dreaming and I'm at a wedding, but the Lord has given me this name before. And if you guys know in scripture, Rachel is the wife of Jacob, okay? 
Jacob chose Rachel over Leah. Even though he was married to the both of them, Rachel was his wife of choice. That was his first choice. Even though he was married to her second, <laughs> after he was tricked into marrying Leah, Rachel was always his choice. Rachel was the wife that he loved, okay? Rachel's name also means, um, in Hebrew, it means what's called um, you, like a female sheep. So a you, and it's it's spelled E-W-E, but it's pronounced you, like Y-O-U. But it's a female sheep, guys. That's what her name means in Hebrew. And female sheep were the predominant element of a flock of sheep. So predominant means like they were the strong, the strongest, like the main element, like the leader, the key, the primary like sheep in a flock of sheep. Okay. They were the primary, the primary leader. Okay. Weber in Jewish means to weave. Okay. W-E-A-V-E. -E. Weber means to weave. This lady's name was Rachel Weber. When you weave something, you intertwine something. You knit it together, okay? You unite something. That's what to weave means, okay? That's what it means. <laughs> so follow me, guys. Um, going back to this dream, the, the dreams, the set of dreams, and I know you guys are probably putting this all together yourself, but the first dream that I saw of like the husband, the wife, and the child just enjoying family time, they were in an open field, like acres of land, like that was showing the restoration of the Lord, like what the Lord had restored their family to. And the Lord showed me that first, so I can see what that end result would, would be. The first dream, it was a, a wife, a husband, and their daughter, and they were just smiling. They were talking with each other. They were enjoying each other, but they were a unit, guys. And that was the very first dream that the Lord showed me, and he showed me that to show the end result of all of this, okay? And then it went to the second dream of the guy telling the lady, like, your husband used to look like this. Like, he used to be this person, but that is not him anymore. That's the Lord saying, like, whoever is waiting for restoration that he's promised restoration to, guys, he will restore. You will get your family back. You will have that unity back. And what was before will be no more. You will have to see your husband as a new man, a new person, because when God restores, he recreates, okay? He doesn't just restore, you know, the old and you're still the same person. God's type of restoration, he recreates, okay? He renews, he redeems. So the man was telling the, the, the lady in the dream, like, this is how your husband used to look. This is who he used to be. He is not this person anymore. But for your trouble and what he took you through and everything you had to go through within this marriage with this man, you are about to have a recompense that's an abundance. It's beyond anything that you could ever imagine. Okay, and this is what the Lord is saying, that he sees what you guys have went through. The ones that have been praying for restoration, God has showed you, this is your kingdom spouse. This is your kingdom wife, um, your wife, your kingdom husband. This, this message is not just for women, okay? This is for men and women. This is restoration, rec recompense, rededication. Those are three words that the Lord gave me months ago. Recompense, restoration, rededication, okay? God is saying that, you will get your unit back. Like you guys will come back together. And not only will you come back together, your husband, your wife, your kingdom husband, your kingdom wife will not be the same person because he's not only going to restore, he's going to redeem, he's going to renew, he's going to recreate that person to be that kingdom spouse that they were designed to be. But because of everything that you went through, because of the tears that you've cried, because of the things you had to endure, um, due to whatever this person took you through within this marriage, due to whatever you guys took each other through within this marriage, you will reap a harvest. What he's promised you, it still stands and it's going to be better than you could ever imagine. Not just financially, it will be financially because I heard the man in my dream telling her like, you're about to come into financial overflow. It will be financially. And people are so against speaking about financial abundance. No, God didn't put his children here to struggle, okay? Money is not a sin. The love of money is a sin, okay? But to have money and to be 
very well off. There's nothing sinful about that. The love of money is a sin. He did not put his children here to struggle. So whatever you went through, you will reap a financial harvest. Like things are about to shift, guys. Things are about to shift. Then it switched to um, the daughter in the dream. And she was throwing away all of the old stuff that they no longer needed, okay? She was throwing away everything that was no longer useful. The Lord cannot put new wine in old wineskins, guys. He has to put your new wine in new wineskins. So whatever is no longer suitable, whatever no longer fits your life, clean it out, get rid of it. Because he's saying like, I'm coming through, I'm doing something new. But for me to do something new, you have to get rid of the old, okay? You have to get rid of the old. Get it out, clean it out. It's cleanup time, guys. We are in the last quarter and I can't stress this enough because he keeps speaking last quarter. Like we are in the last quarter. This year is almost over. His time is not our timing. His ways, they're not our ways. Like he thinks differently, but he's been speaking to me heavily. If you guys have watched my other videos, you hear me say fourth quarter, last quarter, like the heavenly courts are open. Like he's doing a thing, but for him to do a thing, guys, some things are going to have to die. I talked about this too. For things to resurrect, old things have to die. Get rid of the old because he's doing a new thing. His promises to you still stand, but you have to do your part. He's doing a new thing. And then the last dream, of course, I'm waiting for this bride, Rachel Weber, to come down. I'm waiting for her to get to her wedding, guys. And he gave me scriptures on these dreams too. And I'm going to go over a few few scriptures with you guys. Um, but in the last dream, I was waiting for Rachel Weber to come down to her wedding, okay? To, to come down. Like I was waiting for obviously the main, the main person, okay? And again, Rachel means you, E-W-E -E in Hebrew, which is a female sheep. And the female sheep were predominant elements of a flock, meaning the main element, the leader, the key, okay? In this ballroom, I was waiting for the main person to come down. That is Rachel, the bride, okay? Listen to the, the verse he gave me or the set of scriptures he gave me. Revelations 19, 7 through 9. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come. Guys, a lamb is a sheep. Um, for the marriage of the lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. Bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Okay, guys, a lamb is a sheep. Rachel means you, which is a sheep, guys, which is a sheep. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I was invited, guys. I was standing in the middle of the bride, of the, of the ballroom. Okay, that's Revelations 19, verses 7 through 9. God is speaking loud and clear. Your restoration is coming. This marriage is happening. And I, you guys heard me say earlier, like, he'll show me Caucasian people because they are considered white people. White, just like in this scripture, it says bright and pure for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saint. White often signifies righteousness, purity. Come on, guys. And I know like this is this is self-explanatory, this part, guys. These dreams may be self-explanatory to you, but I'm gonna interpret them how he gave it to me. But those of you waiting for restoration and he's promised you these things, like it's coming, hold on. If your name is Rachel and you waiting for restoration and you're listening to this video, like <laughs> bless your heart because you have a whole harvest coming. If your name is Rachel Weber and if someone comments and they their name is Rachel Weber, like I will totally flip out. But it would not surprise me because God, he can do all things. OK, your marriage is going to be restored, but not only restoration, recompense, rededication. And these aren't things that are far off. 
Don't let people tell you, oh, that's years down the line. No, the Lord has been speaking fourth quarter. We are in the fourth quarter, but you have to have faith that he's doing this for you. And this is not for everybody. Those people that this is for, you will know that it's for you. You will know that it's for you. He also gave me, hold on guys. Because the Lord has had me studying these dreams all morning. In, um, in the dream, the guy was telling the lady, like, your husband used to be like this. He's not like this anymore. But you are about to reap a harvest. He was telling her, like, abundance. Like, things are about to change for you. The Lord had me read this morning, Haggai, um, and I hope I'm saying that right, Haggai chapter 2, verse, verse 9. The glory of this latter temple, the temple is the house of God, guys. We are the temple of the Lord. Our bodies are the temple of the Lord. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts, okay? Latter means what's to come, guys. The Lord is saying the, the latter, what's coming is going to be greater than what was. Get that idea out your head of like, this is going to be like this. This is how it's going to be. It has to be this way. No, whatever you're thinking, think bigger. It's going to be greater than what you're thinking. The Lord is going to restore double, triple, quadruple to what you had before. Don't sit up here and try to piece together every little thing that it's going to be. It's going to be bigger. Whatever you're thinking in your head, it's going to be bigger than that. And the last thing <laughs> that happened yesterday in the wee hours of the morning, guys, after these dreams, I woke up. My phone was on airplane mode. Never in my life has my phone went on airplane mode by itself without me putting it on airplane mode to get on an airplane. So I knew in my spirit, I felt in my spirit at that moment that that was the Lord. My phone does not randomly go on airplane mode by itself. I have to click airplane mode. I don't, I can't accidentally hit airplane mode on my phone. But when I woke up in waking life yesterday morning, my phone was on airplane mode. And the Lord had me look up what airplane mode means, even though we all know that before we get on a plane or before the plane takes off, they, the, um, I can't even think of what these people are called. The people that work on the plane, guys, they, um, they tell us to put our, our phones on airplane mode and they tell us to do this because they don't want our phone signals to interfere with the signals on the plane to cause an issue with like the control system for the plane. Okay. We're getting ready to go higher up in the sky. And if everyone's phone stays on and all of these random signals are going, it could interfere with the system, um, the system for the pilot, the pilot that's, you know, driving the plane, like it can interfere with those systems. So, so that it won't interfere with the, the systems on the airplane, we have to put our plane, our phones on airplane mode. Okay. What God is saying is put yourself on airplane mode. Whatever is going on right now, do not try to put your hands in it. He does not need you to interfere with what he's doing. He is the pilot and a plane is flying as I'm saying this. He is the pilot guys. He knows what he's doing. He does not need your signal, your hands to interfere with what he's trying to do for you. Let him finish your story. Let him write your story. Because if you put your hands in it and you interfere, you're going to hinder some things. You're going to mess some things up. And you can't mess up anything that's in the will of God. Like, But you can hinder it. Do not put your hands in anything. Just keep the faith and remember what he has promised you. Remember what he's promised you. Have that childlike faith. It may not look like it, but whatever he's promised you, whatever he's promised you in your area of restoration, it is what it is. It is what it is. And he's trying to unveil things. He's revealing things to you. He's pulling back the curtain on hidden things so you, can, you guys can see what's to come. What's to come? Another scripture he took me to was, oh my gosh, guys, I have so many written. Hold on. Matthew eleven twenty five, guys. This is a scripture the Lord took me took me to. Yesterday was what eleven twenty five. God speaks to me a lot through numbers. It says, at that time, Jesus said, "I praise you, Father." 
Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden things from the wise and learned and revealed them to the little children. What this scripture means is that the Lord will hide things from people who think they're too wise or too intelligent to hear what he has to say. The people that try to take matters into their own hands and they have this worldly wisdom and they're just know-it-alls. He will hide things from them. But to the little children, he will reveal, meaning the people that the us, the children, his children that come to him with childlike faith, and we want to hear from him. We want him to show us. He will reveal things to come to us because we're open to it. But if you're a know-it-all and you feel like you're too wise and you have this worldly wisdom and you feel like you know more than him, he will hide things from you. You will think you're putting keys together and you're doing things and I'm, I'm connecting the dots, but your dots will only be connected temporarily. When you have childlike faith and you lean on the Lord, he will reveal things to you. And what he reveals, it will be and it will stand and it's eternal. It's not a temporary solution to a fix. God does not give us temporary solutions. When he comes to fix a thing, it will not break. It will not break. But when we use our own little worldly wisdom and we want to be know-it-alls and put our hands in something just to get some temporary satisfaction, that's exactly what you're going to get. Temporary satisfaction. Let God take you higher. He is the pilot. You are the passenger. Sit back. Put your your phone on airplane mode. Do not interfere with what he's doing. Let him finish your story. Let him finish writing your story. It's going to be beautiful. Okay, guys, this is already over 30 minutes, but I hope y'all hear me and I hope this helps somebody. And if your name is Rachel, don't have to be Rachel Weber, but Rachel, and you've been waiting for restoration and God has told you he's going to restore and you feel this in your spirit, start shouting right now. Whoever this is for, start praising him and shouting and praying right now because he is going to do it, guys. Fourth quarter, we're in the, the fourth quarter, blessings on blessings on blessing. Keep your childlike faith. Keep it. Don't put your hands in anything. He's going to take you higher. You're getting ready to go higher. You're getting ready to go into a totally different season of your life. And remember when you get there, remain humble and remember who got you there. Don't forget about the person who got you there. And don't get the big head, okay? Remain humble. So that's all I have right now, guys. I'm sure I'll be back because even last night I had like five dreams, guys. God has been really overloading me. And these are dreams where I'm like, well, I can wait, Lord. Just, you know, give me the go ahead. And he's like, go, release them. Because this this is the this is crunch time. So I love you guys. I hope you enjoy your Black Friday. If you're shopping, be safe, be careful out there. Don't be overspending what you don't have, okay, guys? But enjoy your day and see you guys soon. Bye.